Good afternoon. Let's make our way in here. We're going to, uh, once again, we'll, we'll sing one song. Um, Doug Gifford will lead us in a word of prayer, and then we'll uh, turn Woody back loose on us. <laughs> He's been doing a wonderful job uh, this morning, and uh, we're excited for this afternoon. If you missed uh, any of the sessions this morning, or if you'd like to go back and review, we are live streaming these on our YouTube channel, and you can go back and access them anytime. And in fact, on our YouTube page, there's a playlist called Creating Gospel Conversations. And you'll see all the sessions, including tomorrow's uh, Bible class and worship service on there. So if you're not able to attend them all, you can go and check that out. <clears throat> there's a call come ringing o'er the restless waves and the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. The blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light. The blessed gospel light. Let it shine forever. Pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light. And a Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the work of love, send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above, send the light. Send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Father, again, we are thankful for a beautiful uh, day, for the sunshine, for this, this time of year again. We still see things come to life or appear dead, and, and Father, we just realize what, what you can do for us, and we're so thankful. Father, just thank you for the time that uh, each has been able to spend here this afternoon. We thank you for that sacrifice of time that was mentioned already this morning. We know there are many things that... Uh, we could be doing, but Father, we thank you that you saw fit that we could be here and, and uh, we can take in uh, your word, that we can take in uh, things that will help us to better serve you and to better serve your will. Father, we just thank you for being reminded that, that we do have a purpose for being here. And Father, we, we uh, sometimes forget that purpose, we get caught up in, in life. Father, we just uh, thank you that we've been reminded that our purpose is to, to glorify you and to make disciples. Father, help us to, to keep this in mind and, and help that to form the things that we do each day. Father, we're thankful to be reminded that uh, uh, Jesus is our king. And Father, that uh, he has the right to, to rule our life. And uh, Father, we just ask that you would help us to be of humble mind that we would allow him to rule. Father, we admit to you that uh, sometimes we forget that. We get that reversed. 
Father, we, we think that um, that we have the rules um, for those things that are things that you have for us. Father, be with us this afternoon as we continue. Um, be with Woody as he says the things that um, you've laid on him to say. And Father, help him to say those things that he, that he needs to. Help us to hear the things that, that we need to from, from you. Father, be with the church here as, as we take those things in, that we would um, be able to take those things out, that we would be able to reach lives here in, in this community. We just ask you to continue to be with the church in Bogsville and help them to um, to reach folks in, in their community. And Father, because, of, again, as we've been reminded, that we have absolute good news to share. And so our minds to believe so and, and our hearts to do so. Again, just be with us this afternoon as as we uh, study together. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. All right. Hard part now, keeping you awake after lunch. Um, <clears throat> let's go back real quickly. We ended. You know, we looked at the eight C's we're listening to, and, and let's just take a few minutes. Let's go with Nicodemus. Um, if your list, if uh, Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. It, no, you didn't know I was doing this. Well, now what am I doing? Am I going backwards or forwards? Technology is such a... Okay, let's go back to those eight C's. Nicodemus, if you were starting a gospel conversation, which of those eight C's do you think he would, if you're listening to, which would he have? He's confused about who Jesus was, yeah. What about, Mo, who had Moses? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Philippian jailer. There was a little bit of crisis, yeah. Probably got a little chaotic and some conflict, too, with him. And who, was, who, who did y'all have? Daniel. Yeah, the crisis and the lines. Yeah. And, and the thing is, when we listen to people's conversations, we can hear some of those. That's why I would encourage you on the sheet that lists them, you know, and we're not going to do this because it could get personal, but you've been through some changes in your life. How did God help you through those changes? And you don't have to write war and peace. You know, here, here's just, man, here's a couple of changes, and here's part of my story of how God helped me through this change. And when you have those there, you know, here's the time when we went through some conflict. If you had teenagers, you've gone through conflict. And, and, you know, and here, here's or conflict at work, and, and man, here's a crisis. That went, you know, here's how God helped helped us. So I'm just saying, you, you've seen God working through all of those, right? And so just set, take some time and say, okay, here's, here's, man, here's a time when I went through some crisis. I'll look back, here's how God got me through it. Because that will be the opportunity where when you're listening, you hear somebody saying, man, I don't know what's going on. You transition, say, well, let me share something with you that helped me when I went through a thing. And then boom, you just tell the story. Does that make sense? So that that's just help you do that. Um, this afternoon will be very practical. You know, we, we laid some groundwork this morning, and so we'll begin by looking at the uh, the church grew, it grew a lot during times when we had sense, easy, simple, reproducible tools that we could use. How many of you remember Jill Miller film strips? Jill Miller film strips were amazing. I remember growing up, sitting in, in, in our living room and Mom, Dad have the film, and we'd have people just crowded in there. You even know what Jill Miller film strips are, you youngsters, kind of, sort of. I mean, you know, you don't know Jill Miller film strips? Oh, 
literally thousands and thousands of people, I believe, were led to Christ because of Jill Miller. And what made it so effective was anybody could do it. You just get the film strip. You don't even know what a film strip is, do you? All right. A film strip projector. And, and we had the one with the, the record on it that was all party one. <laughs> Bing! You turn the film strip. It was amazing because people could just take that and go in and, and do it. And the church grew like crazy. Then, then came along uh, the John Hurt Bible Correspondent Courses. Just simple tool that you, you, you do it and grade it and back and forth. World Bible School is a simple tool where, where things are going crazy. Then there was the bus ministry. Remember bus ministry days? Now, I'm not sure we did everything for the glory of God in bus ministry days, but, man, we, we, we brought in people. Our, I grew up in a little church with bus ministry, and, and it was, I'm not, it, it got a little crazy. Our our biggest rival was Park Avenue Baptist Church, and, and I you know you go out and knock on doors, and I remember they would go down the street, knock on doors, put candy on the door with their little flyer, and we'd go after them, take their flyer off, put our flyer on there, but leave the candy there, and, and, and just, you know and, and beat them. It was just crazy. You crowd five hundred kids into a sixty passenger bus, and and we're, we're breaking all kinds of laws, and but. It was a simple tool that everybody could use. And I think just learning to have, you know, gospel conversation is it, like that as well. It's just a temp, simple tool that, that, that we all, all can use. And so there's a couple of things we need to remember, though. These things, oh, two, four things to remember. They're tools. I'm going to give you three or four things you might can use, and, and we've already talked about telling your story. These aren't, this isn't the way to do it. But here's some things you can do that when you have an opportunity to share the gospel, these are just some tools you can, you, you can use. Number two, it's your napkin. And here's what I mean by that. If, you're, if you want to draw one of these things on your napkin, do it the way you want to do. I'm not telling you this is the way you have to. It's your napkin. As long as you're presenting the gospel, you can just... Play tic-tac-toe on it if you can come up with a way to present the gospel with tic-tac-toe. So, so, you know, don't feel like you have to do it this way. And, and, and then three, practice is the key. See a theme here? If, we, if you say, hey, I like this tool here, or I like maybe doing this, would you practice, practice with somebody? Sit down and say, hey, can I try this out on you? What do you think? Um, do that. And then number four, your story is essential. We talked about this morning, how we can talk, develop our story to share how we became a Christian. Because you can use your story to use some of these tools we're going to talk about. So we're going to fill your toolbox up this afternoon by just looking at some simple things. None of these are original with me. I stole every one of them. I got permission from some people to use them. The others I just stole. But, but none of them are, are original with me, but yet... They're important too. So now the first one we talked about what was um, your story. We've already talked about that. We were talking about aging parents a while ago, um, and, and that's a that stage that we're so going through. We have a lady at our church that, that works with a lady who, who was going through that, and she was talking to Judy about it, and, and Judy had just gone through it with their mother-in-law, and their mother-in-law just died and went to heaven. She was a great member of our church, a sweet, sweet lady. And Judy, it, it, we'd gone through this training, and she came back so excited. She said, hey, my, my friend's coming to church, and we've been talking to her. And I, she said, here's what we have. She, she was talking about having to deal with her aging mom and not having any support. So which C's do we got there? Probably some crisis, a little bit. Yeah, huh? Change? She said, yeah. And Judy said, I, I, I heard those C's, and I just said, you know what? We've got, just gone through some of that with my mother-in-law. Can I share with you something that helped me? And she just started talking about how their church family helped her. And the lady said, I need a church family like that. And Judy said, well, come on, I'll introduce you to some people. Gospel conversation. Boop, drop the seed. And got her there. And then we, we were able to, to, to share the gospel. And you, you can just go on and on about that. We've got, in fact, Judy's son-in-law. His name's Jay, letter J, that's how he spells it. Um, 
he, he, he now just got a new job working the highway patrol, but he worked at a furniture store for a long time. And he would, he said, Woody, I just, I started praying with customers. I, I, every customer that walks in, I look for an opportunity. He says, now, I don't get pushy, you know, but he says, I just look for opportunities. And he said, he called me the first one. He said, we had a truck driver at the, to come to the store. And he goes, I was in a bad mood because the boss's son didn't do what he was supposed to do. So I'm, I'm in a bad mood, and this truck driver comes in and said something. And I said, I just snapped at him. And the guy said, man, you've had a hard day. And Jay said, yeah, I have. And this guy said, well, I have too. And then Jay said, he said, what, 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 what's, uh, what, what's going on with you? And he said, well, my wife's got, you know, I just, just told his story. And Jay said, it just dawned on me that I was so mad that I was passing up this opportunity to have a gospel conversation. And he, he said the guy's name was Ahmed. And Jay said, you know what? I've had a bad day too. And he says, I need to apologize to you because I took it out on you. And I shouldn't do that. And the guy said, why shouldn't you do that? He said, well, because I'm a Christian. And what I did was wrong. And, and, and he said, well, let me tell you. And he, he told a little bit of a story. And, and Jay said, can I just pray with you? I'll, we'll pray about my situation and yours. And I, he said, sure. So he starts praying. He said, right in the middle of the prayer, this guy grabs his CB radio. <laughs> he starts shouting, this man's praying for me. This white man's praying for me. I'm a Muslim, but yet he's praying for me. And every time he comes, Jay said, we have, we talk about Jesus. He said, no, I haven't baptized him yet. There's, there's, I'm telling you, there are opportunities all around. And when you start asking God to put people in your life for you to have gospel conversations with, be prepared. Because you're going to get nuts and problem people and be interrupted. You know, it's interesting that sometimes we pray for things and we don't really understand what we're praying for. Like we say, God, help me learn to love like Jesus. You know what you're asking, right? God, send a Judas in my life to betray me so I can wash his feet. So when you're asking to love like Jesus, better watch out. There's going to be a Gadarene demonic. There's going to be a leper. There's going to be a woman at the well in your life. But that's the only way you can learn to love like Jesus. And you're going to have a Judas. Okay? So, so we have to be careful about that. But, but so, so let's just look at these real quick, some, some of the things here. Uh, we, we talked about developing our story, and we talked about how to do that this morning, uh, or, or, yeah, at this morning session. I encourage you to spend some time just writing your story. Here's what my life was like before I met Jesus. Here's how I was led to Christ, and here's how my life has changed. And your story is amazing. And you may not think it's amazing, but I'll tell you, God can use some, use it to do some amazing things. But then you can also use Jesus stories. You can tell, you can say, hey, can I share with something I, I learned? And you can talk about, you can share the parables. And you don't have to get all, you don't have to, well, the Bible says, you can say, here, let me tell you a story. And you can tell a story of the Good Samaritan. You don't have to pull it out and read it. You can, you can even modernize it a little bit. You, you can talk about his miracles. In fact, when I study with people, usually if they have very little Bible knowledge, I, I go to four miracles. I go to the leper in Mark 1, because I believe every physical miracle has a spiritual lesson. And I talk about the fact that, that, that Jesus touched that leper. And I usually say when something clean touches something dirty, what happens to the clean thing? Unless you're Jesus. When God touches something dirty, the dirty becomes clean. And how, no matter how bad our life is, Jesus is willing to touch us. I, I love talking about the gathering demonic. I do, but, but, you know, and I just share the story. I just briefly share the story. I don't give them the, the Ten Commandments version with Charlton Heston or, or you know, whatever. I just share it and say, you know, here, here's something that helped me. Encounters Jesus had, like the woman at the well. Just share Jesus stories. You know, the messages, Sermon on the Mount. Here's something I read the other day. Can I share with you something I read? And you just talk. 
and you just plant the seed and then let God work. You just had a gospel conversation. We need to understand, when we're talking about having gospel conversations, we're not talking about two-hour monologues. It may be a 30-second, boom. Here's how something helped me. Here's how God helped me. Here's something I learned. And then what? Let God work. And then you come see him the next week because you're, you're seeing the same people every week. You go to the same teller. You have the same waitress. You work the same. You, boop, 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 and then you, you let God work. Does that make sense? Tell your story. Use Jesus' stories. And then here, here's something called three circles. That came from the book I shared, you, I shared with you about. And so you, you say, hey, can I share with you something? And you can sort of use this to tell your story. You take your napkin. You draw, draw a circle, and you say, you know, you talk about God's purpose. And I even put a dialogue in there, or, or a sample script in there, but you can say, listen, you know, God created us for a purpose. He created us in his image. He created us uh, to, to fulfill his purpose, and, 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 you know, I realize that. But then sin came into my life, and, and you can talk a little bit about maybe what, how sin came into your life. And because sin came into my life, I, it ended up for me being broken. So you draw a second circle and you write brokenness. You know, I, 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 I struggle with guilt. I, I, I fell, it, 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 it ruined my relationships, whatever it is. And, and you say, I tried to struggle with it with different ways. Those little arrows up there, I would usually draw arrows and say, some people try to deal with their guilt through addiction. Some people try to deal with their guilt through bad relationships. Some, some people try to deal with their guilt through religion. And I would just draw that arrow. And I'd say, you know, I, I was created for this purpose, but because of my sin, I, I became broken. I couldn't have that relationship with God. I lost my purpose. I lost my way. I was loaded with guilt. I felt hopeless. My relationships fell apart. But then, uh, you know, through that lost in guilt, somebody, then I heard, learned about a man named Jesus who came to earth. I draw the arrow down. I came to the earth. He lived a perfect life. He, he um, died on the cross of my sins. Talk a little, you know, he rose from the grave. Here's why I believe he rose from the grave, and I would give some of those evidences. I, then I was baptized into Christ, and usually under that I, I, I talk about, I usually draw the baptism in Christ, and, and I'm just basically telling my story. Here I was born. In my case, there was the abuse that left me broken in my life. I tried to deal with that, that abuse in my life this way, this way, this way. But then somebody uh, told me about told me about Jesus. Or at church, I learned this. I became a Christian. And now I'm clean. I'm, I rejoice. And guess what I get to do now? I get to fulfill God's purpose. I get to do what I was created to do. I get to become the image bearer I was created to do. And I tell that story, and I just draw those circles on the napkin, and I say, does that make sense to you? And they'll say, yeah, or no, or what? And, and, and that's, that's just a tool. Does that make sense? Just a simple tool. Here, here's created this way for God's purpose. I blew it. Here's how I tried to fix it. The arrows. Here's who shared the gospel with me. Here's what they shared. I was baptized. And guess what? I'm now the person I was created to be in Christ. That, that, that's some good stuff. And, and, and my sins are washed away. And he continues to wash away my sins as I trust him. And that in Christ, he sees perfection. Got that? Simple tool. Uh, I told you. That, uh, this one I, I stole off of FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. But, but it's pretty good. And, and, you know, someone, you're talking to somebody, they're going through crisis. And you say, well, can I share with you something that helped me? And you're transitioning to that gospel conversation. This is called four truths. I take the napkin and I, uh, whoops, I take the napkin and I draw a little heart and I talk about God's love. I want you, you know, can I share with you something? God loves you. I went through a time in my life where I didn't think God loved me. Maybe because of this bad relationship or because of this abuse or because of bad religious teaching. I just felt like I had to earn God's love. I had to be perfect to get God's love. But yet God loves me, and he wants you to experience his love. He wants you to experience his purpose. He He wants you to be the person you were created to be. And so you just talk. And again, I'm not doing a 15-minute sermon point one. That's a 30-second discussion. 
And so I draw the heart and say, let, can, let me share with you something to help me. And I usually interrupt my, my story. There was a time in my life as a child where I didn't feel loved by anybody. But someone shared with me that God loves me. Then you draw the, the, the vision sign. And because of my sin, because of the choices I made, sin separated me. In fact, the Bible says we've all sinned. And, and, and it damaged my relationships. Not only my relationship with God, it damaged my relationship with other people. I lived with guilt. I lived with fear. I didn't feel, I, I felt unloved because I chose to pull away from God. And I just sort of share my story. I, I was in church my whole life, but yet I was, like we talked about some of the stories this morning, you don't have to be an axe murderer to have a story. It could be, you know what, I was a self-righteous Christian that sat in a pew every Sunday and thought I was better than everybody else. That's the most powerful story one of our people said, said one Sunday. And then that's, I realized I'd separated from God. Then I draw the cross and talk about, I just share the gospel. But then someone told me how Jesus came to earth, died on the cross for our sins, rose from the grave. And here's how I know he rose from the grave. You know, I have people, have you got proof? No, but I got some evidence. And to me, the biggest evidence that Jesus walked out of that grave was the apostles went from cowards to courageous. They were hiding, and then 50 days later, they're saying, you killed that man. And to me, that's great evidence. Because you know what? Nobody dies for a lie. People die for, for what they believe all the time. People in the Middle East every day blow themselves up for what they believe. But nobody's going to steal the body and say, yeah, we saw him dead and then alive and, and then be hung on a cross upside down. To me, that's pretty good evidence. And, and now he reigns as king. He is king of my life. He wants. He's a good king that wants to bless me. And, 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 and he, he wants me to be a part of his kingdom. And as part of his kingdom, I get to share heaven with a broken world so that they can get a little peek of what it's going to be like when Jesus comes again. And so I have this purpose of glorifying the Father. And then I say, does that make sense? Would, would you like to do that? And you share the plan of salvation. You talk about repentance. And by the way, would we stop making repentance a dirty word? We teach repentance. I'm getting off on soapbox. We, we teach repentance like turn a burn. I mean, we're, we're the guy on the sign at the corner with the sandwich sign. Repentance is a great thing. Repentance, you better repent or you're going to hell. I, I understand that. But repentance is a new beginning. Repentance is a positive. Instead of saying, you better repent, you're going to hell. You know what? Because of God now, you get to change the way you think about God and Jesus. And that's called repentance. And you get a new start. Why do we have to take good news and turn it into bad news? And, and you share the plan of salvation. Four truths. I just tell that story. I draw a heart. Division sign, a cross, and a question mark. Simple tool, right? Told you it's simple. You're thinking, why am I wasting my time here? This stuff, Mickey Mouse stuff. It's simple, but it's effective. I really love this one. And we use this a lot with our addiction ministry. Because we, we, we serve with, we have some AA groups and stuff that meet, and, and it's been very effective. And, and so when, when someone's, with an 8C, their conflict, that they need to make a decision. I don't care if it's a decision about whether to go to school. I don't care if it's a decision about relationships. I don't care if it's a financial decision. I don't care what the decision is. I draw that little box and I say, you know, here's something that helped me when I was faced with what to do. And I say, can I share it with you? Yeah. And so I ask them, I say, you need to ask yourself these four questions and if the just ask yourself these four questions. Is it helpful? If what you're thinking about doing, is it helpful? Is it going to help you reach your goals? Is it going to help you find the peace you're seeking? Is it going to help your relationships? Is it going to help you reach your long-term goals? And then it's, is it beneficial? How, how will you feel afterwards? 
How's it going to affect your short-term feelings? Are you going to feel guilty after you do it? Are you going to feel shame after you do it? Uh, does it glorify God if you're talking to a Christian? Is this being in this relationship going to help you? And then, then I say the third question I ask is, is it wise? Is it wise? Does it help me? Uh, um, how does it affect my relationships? How is it going to affect my family? How is it going to affect my faith? How is it going to affect my peace of mind? Is, it, is this really the wise thing to do? And I don't care if we're thinking about using a drug, starting a relationship, breaking up, you know, whatever it is. And then the fourth one is, is it praiseworthy? I know praiseworthy. Is it praiseworthy? In other words, what would grandma think if she knew you were doing this? What does God think? Is it something you don't want people to know? And then I tell them, if the answer is not yes to all of these questions, don't do it. That's simple, isn't it? And someone says, I just don't know what to do. Well, can I share with you something that helps me? Boop, 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 boop. I ask myself, is it helpful? Is it, really helpful? Is it going to help me reach my long-term goals? Is it beneficial? How's it going to benefit my, my relationship? How's it going to benefit me short term? How am I going to fix? And you hand them the napkin and say, there you go. You planted a seed. Now, you can use it in another way, using the scripture here. Again, is it wise? Is it healthy? Because it says Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. Is it healthy? How's it going to affect you physically? Is holding that grudge, how's it going to affect you? Is hating that person, how's it going to affect you? I use this a lot. This one's particularly when I'm dealing with Christians who struggle with unforgiveness. How, how's this refusing to... To forget, how's, it help, how's this affecting your health? Because I can tell you from experience, bitterness and unforgiveness will destroy your physical health. I've been there. And then, how does it affect your relationship with others? Jesus grew in favor of God and man. And how does it affect your relationship with God? And, and so you need to, to, to answer those to help. So, so those, that, that's uh, another tool that I use. I know when uh, I used this one time, I moved from Tennessee up to Ohio, and I spent the first 20 years trying to get back to Tennessee because, you know, I'm a Southern boy. I didn't want to live in Ohio, but I married a Yankee, so here I am. <laughs> been in, like I said this morning, been in foreign missions for 40 years in Ohio. And so we had, you know, our churches opening. There would be times. And I got a call from a church in Orlando, Florida. And I thought, okay, Byesville, Ohio, one traffic light, a McDonald's that just opened back up because they had to get rid of all the roaches, or Orlando. All right, which one do I want? You know, and, this was, and my kids were young then. Young, and so we, we went down. I said, yeah, but they flew us down. It's the weirdest I hate the whole preacher parade, hiring a preacher anyway. But it was the weirdest. If we landed, and they took the kids to Cape Canaveral, to NASA, and they took me and my wife house hunting. We haven't said anything yet. Now, this is a nice area to live. And it's like, what are we doing? I'm like, you don't know me, and I don't know you. And, and so we did all of that, and we went through. Uh, the, they did the thing where you... You meet the church, and they ask you questions, and they're just, they're just, just horrible, just horrible. But anyway, and so they're asking all these questions and stuff, and, and I'm thinking, man, Orlando, this could be pretty cool. It's a nice big church, going to be down in Orlando, it's going to be sunny. I looked over, my son was about nine years old at the time, and I looked down, and he had, had a piece of paper, and he was drawing, and he drew one ch little church building with a cross on it, and he wrote, stop nine. Yay, yay, yay. And then he wrote, drew another building next to it and wrote the name of the church there and then drew pictures of planes bombing the church building. <laughs> boo, boo, boo. I looked at that, and I knew right then and there I wasn't moving to Orlando. You know, because how would that affect 
and, and you know, finally God gave me some peace to stay where I am. Been there 36 years. And then I, I stayed because of my kids. Because once they got old enough, I wasn't going to move them somewhere. And then they graduate from high school. What do they do? One moves to Nashville. I've been trying all my life. To get there. <laughs> but now they're all back. It's, uh, but anyway, but but that helped me. How does it affect? How if I say yes, how would that affect my relationship with my kids? And so uh, there you go. The bottom of the page there, I think, on your outline, if I got it right. Talks about the. Well, maybe I don't have it on there. Okay, never mind. Let's see what I got. See what's next. Okay, um, maybe it's bottom. Up. What amazes me in the New Testament is that a group of uneducated men with no Christian colleges, no Bible, no internet, living in an oppressive government. And it says in Acts 4.13, they were uneducated, unlearned men. Turned the world upside down. And all they did was have conversations with people. Paul would go to the marketplace and just start up gospel conversations. That's all they did. That, that's, that's pretty simple stuff, isn't it? It's just not easy. Because for me to do that, first I have to be vulnerable enough to write my story, or at least think about my story. I have to get out of my stinking comfort zone to start the conversation. And like I said this morning, if you're comfortable, you're unfaithful. You cannot be comfortable and be a faithful Christian because everything Jesus tells us to do calls us to get out of our comfort zone. So it's simple. It's just not easy. So here's what we're going to do before the last... Uh, session. Um, I pick a card, any card. Pick a card. There's always one that cheats in every group. <laughs> card, 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 card. Last one. Over. We're, we're just going to practice doing a gospel conversation. And so you get in your groups. I don't care how you group up. I don't care how you group up. You don't have to discuss every card. Just pick one of them. If you four together, you say, just pick a card. Here's one. Do you believe in random chance? Or or uh, as a Christian, how do you make sense of mental illness? How does that reflect on God? And so, they're quite, so pick one question. Pick one. And then as a group, let's take five, ten minutes before we do our last session and talk about it. Maybe talk about which one of these eight, what, what those eight C's, how, what do you think would trigger that question? And then how would you answer that if someone came up and asked you that question? How would you start that gospel conversation? So your group can pick one, or if you want to do two, you can. Then you can give me the rest of them you choose not to pick, and then get in your group, and let's talk about it for about 10 minutes. Does that make sense? Then we'll take a break, then we'll have our last session, and then you can be free to enjoy the afternoon. Does everybody understand what we're doing? All right, get with your group and see what you, uh, and we'll share. you'll share with it. Once you decide which card you don't use, oh, I didn't, did you get a card? Oh, pick a card, any card. Oh. Oh, okay. You want to 
Okay. Mary Ann, did you get a card? Okay. Joe, you up here? You chilling? It's hot in here, isn't it? About 100 degrees. You're going to do them all or just pick one? Yeah. Let's see. Ooh, that was a good one. We, we got some good ones. Yes. That was really good. All right.
Okay, about a minute, then we'll share with what you came up with. You can keep the one you're talking about, if you, unless you remember it. Okay. Yeah, we'll take them up, unless it's up to the one, you, one you're going to talk about. Okay, Ooh, that's a good one. We'll take it up later. All right. Let's see what we figured out with your little gospel conversation. What you got? What'd you have? Uh, our first question was about why why Catholics say the Catholic Council is not part of the Trinity. Oh, similar questions. What was your question? If God's perfect in creating the world, why is there a problem? Have you ever been angry at God? Okay. What'd y'all have? Oh, well, they're all sort of similar. Okay. Positive. Okay, what'd you come up with? Uh, I mean, some of the same things we talked about is just, you know, our own personal choices in life allow bad things to happen. Uh, unless we're able to always keep things right, which is exactly what we're saying. Well, that sin is, is a reality in the world. And another reason to say, well, why do bad things happen to God love this? Well, sin is just being human. Uh, and that sin is also being totally human. Yeah, free will is an important thing, or important concept that a lot of people don't understand. They blame God for the choices they made and the consequences. I tell people all the time, you're free to choose to live any way you want to. You're not free to choose the consequences of those choices. And so, yeah. So the wisdom is said that, you know, all you got to do is watch TV when you get nervous about that. So it's the fact that God is in control. I know I have a deep sense that God is in control of my life. Mm -hmm. um, things may not always go the way I want them to go, but I know in the end that it's, it's going to be all right. Yeah. He's, Jesus is king, and if it's king, he's got it. And, and you know, and, and, and these conversations are conversations you would have with people. It may not be exactly these questions, but if you're hearing somebody who says, I just don't understand why God allows this to happen, ding, 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 ding. Or I'm so worried about the future. I'm worried about whatever. That's where. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, God's got it. He's got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Losing their job or, or assuming that if it's 
through their career quickly, they don't want to fight. You know, so maybe they got to take a little bit of time. Compare that with some of you lost a child and lost work. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a tough conversation to have. And, and you have to reconcile the fact that we live in a broken world where Satan is the ruler of the kingdom of the air. But the reason he's had whatever power Satan has in this world is partly because pe more people choose to follow Satan. <laughs> Yeah, so why is why is and so but yet I think God's ultimate will is gonna be done. Ultimately it's gonna be done. And so but those are part of the gospel conversations that you have, that we have here. What y'all what was your question? What'd y'all deal with? <laughs> and, and we talk about you know, if there's a hard situation, then that teaches against God. Mm -hmm. Take that into your own hands. Sometimes there's a hard situation that what really kills you is what you tell yourself. Just like what we're just talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Have you ever dealt with somebody that was angry at God? What do you tell them? I mean, I've been angry at God. Huh? Yeah. I, sometimes I even say, you know what? God can handle our anger. He can handle it. What do you say? Yeah. I, I I did a double funeral Thursday. First first and hopefully hopefully last double funeral where his two cousins killed in a car wreck. And it was the same. Why? You know, it doesn't you know, why why did that first they, they were doing that and you know, I tried to deal with that by saying, No more we live in a broken world and death came into this world through Satan. And we need to understand that that Satan brought that into the world, and and and, and I we try I tried to normalize it. I went, I went through an anger time, not probably the most angry I was. The guy was when my father-in-law was killed. He was helping somebody, and then he was killed. You know, just uh, some bat ruptured, and I forget how many tons of cinders just fell on him, killed him. And it's like, yeah. You know, and I remember being so angry at God, and I'm preaching during that time, and, and so. 
I said, you know what? It's okay. But I, I told them all, I said, but never doubt God's love for you. Remember, we live in a broken world where sin is there and death, death comes with sin, and it's okay to be angry, but you never need to doubt God's love. God isn't just something you can do. That's right. That's right. God isn't some prerequisite to go by. Mm -hmm. Tell that Paul, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. It is. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. A lot of what's wrong in the world is because people choose to follow Satan instead of listen to God. And that affects, quote, innocent people. It does. You can't have free will and no consequences. And, and, and those are all tough, con tough discussions to have. But you can see how pretty easy you can start a, it's pretty easy to start a gospel conversation if you just listen. Right? And we do, this is, I found this on Facebook, believe it or not. Uh, I think it's called Talking Points. And I just picked out, and it's a one based on uh, Christian stuff. And sometimes, a lot of times in our classes, this is what we do on the Wednesday night class. It's okay. Use scripture to support your answer. And it's great training on how to have gospel. What's the word? Practice. It's a great time to practice that. Okay? So there you go. Just a little bit of practice time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we try to get to in the morning. We'll, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Discovery Bible Study, but I'll make you go. It's just a great tool. It's just tools. And the thing about Bible, the only difference between Bible study and reading the Bible is in Bible study, you ask questions. I just read the passage and start asking questions. And I seek the answers. But anyway. Well, you want to take a break and finish up? Or you want go ahead. Right, I agree with that. That's a great point. God does, yeah. God's good at taking negatives and bringing something good out of them. I mean, I've had all these conversations with people. Now, it's to have these conversations we've talked about. There has to be some relationships there before you really have them. And that's where we talked about our mission field is where you get your hair cut, where you and you start listening and you start building those relationships. And we'll really touch on that in the morning. About intentional relationships. Okay. Yeah. You do get one. We'll talk about that a little bit next session. If you're right. We're going to take a break or jump right in. Don't matter me. Take All right. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Not Ben Driver 10 minutes. Regular 10 minutes. <laughs> Actually, he did pretty good. We got started at 116. That's pretty good for a preacher. <laughs>